Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so very excited to have you here. Today I'm doing something kind of cheesy and I, I know it's cheesy and I just honestly don't care. But Nick is coming home very shortly. I think by the time that you end up seeing this video, he will either be on his way home or already home. So in honor of Nicholas coming home from his deployment, I thought what better way to prepare for him coming home than to read military romance books the week before he comes home. It's so corny, I know, but that's okay. I don't really mind. It is what it is. <laughs> so I wanted to go ahead and start off today by reading Great and Precious Things. Now all of the books that I have today are going to be the Rebecca Yaros military romance books. I was hoping that these weren't going to be really corny and that they were just going to be actually like good romance books and stuff like that. Rebecca Yaros has all the hype right now so I figured that her books are probably going to be I don't want to say the best of the best, but they're probably going to be up there and the rest of them are probably just going to be like, eh. I didn't really want anything corny because the topic is already really corny. So I didn't really want to read some stuff that was just kind of boring and cheesy and weird and too spicy. I just wanted something simple. I don't know if these books are spicy at all, but I guess I'll let you know. We'll see. Just want to get back in that romancy mood and <sighs> yeah. Cannot wait to see him. Very excited about that. I'm gonna start with this one. I honestly started a little bit of this the other day just because I was gonna get ready, like prepped and ready to go or whatever, but I ended up not comprehending anything that I read. So I'm just gonna restart it. I do have to clean the bathroom today. So I downloaded a free trial of Audible and I figured that I would go ahead and just listen to the audiobook while I was cleaning a little bit. Then I would kind of read it as I got more into the story. My biggest issue with books is the first like maybe a hundred pages. It's so hard for me to actually get into the book and actually understand what's going on and comprehend everything and not forget stuff. So I figured that maybe by me listening to it to start off with, it'll kind of help Im implant it into my brain a little bit more so I'll actually be able to remember, especially by the time I come to do my monthly recap because that Whew, those are those are interesting. <laughs> those get really fun over here on the side of the camera. So that's the plan. That's the plan for today. Hopefully I can get these finished up before he comes home. That's the goal. Hopefully he does come home. That's the real goal. <laughs> the, the real goal is actually getting him back home. But I'm gonna go ahead and get the audiobook downloaded of this. I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning the bathroom. You'll see a little bit of that and then I'll actually sit down and start reading it at some point. terribly long ago but I did notice this after I finished my audiobook stopped perfectly at chapter five and when I look back in my book after to see everything that I'd read to see what chapter I was on I had gotten to chapter five when I first started reading this so I literally finished exactly as I was finished cleaning and exactly where I had left off so I pretty much just re-listen everything that I already read. Like I said before, I I'm, I don't know if I said this before, but I did not retain any of the information. I went ahead and got that redone. So now I'm on chapter five, ready to go. I'm going to edit a little bit of another video tonight. I don't know how much reading I'm gonna be doing. I might end up picking that up tomorrow, but very excited to crack open a Red Bull. I'm very tired. The bathroom was a little bit harder to clean than I would have liked. <laughs> but I got it done. Thank the Lord. So, so far, I'm on chapter five. I'm enjoying it. I don't know how I feel about, what's his name, Cameron? Or is it Camden? Camden. 
So Camden is the main male character and Willow, I guess, is the main female character. So I don't know how I'm liking their relationships so far. I mean, I'm assuming that they're going to be the ones that get together. Who knows? We'll see. The audiobook was okay. I don't normally love listening to audiobooks. This one, same thing. The guy is okay-ish. I still don't love him. The girl, she just... I don't like whenever the women try to do the uh, the men's voice a lot of times just because it sounds really, <laughs> really goofy. So she's doing a lot of that in this and I'm not really the biggest fan of it. She was also very theatrical with it for some reason. It was just too much. Like... I feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, do it like you're you're reading. Not not like you're reading, excuse me. I feel like if you're gonna do that, do it like you're acting, like in a movie. I I or just like you're would be talking in general and she was just like and I have to keep my feelings to myself. Like that's so fake. I'm sorry it's so fake. <laughs> and it's not for me it's not enjoyable to listen to that. But that's okay. I just recapped everything that I already, I already read. So I'm not complaining. I didn't really get any farther. I was hoping I would, but I guess I'm not really that surprised because audiobooks go a lot slower. But I'm on page 59. So far, so good. So I got my hair up. I'm in the middle of oiling it right now because I'm about to shower. But I decided I want to make pretzels. So I'm going to do that. We're going to just listen to the audiobooks some more so I can make those and then get them rising and then I can go take a shower. see i'm on chapter 13 i'm on page 171 of am i no i'm not yes i am i'm on page 171 of great and precious things so far i'm enjoying it the only thing that i'm getting really frustrated at is camden he is driving me nuts with him talking about his brother like he really is it's it's like every chapter he doesn't go without talking about it and it's like i get it i do understand but it's also been a while and at the end of the day it is what it is you know what I mean it's like he wants everybody else to forget about it and like stop bringing it up and stuff but he can't do the same he can't forget about it he can't stop talking about it like he can't just let it go and let the past be the past I've never been in that situation obviously <laughs> so I'm not like gonna sit here and say oh you know he should be doing this and this and this because I really don't know but I do know that it's kind of getting on my nerves but I would say like I don't know it's like 40% of the way through maybe ish I've been listening to the audiobook pretty heavily I did all the cleaning the other day making the pretzels today which I'll f listen to the audiobook as I'm bowling them and stuff like that but I have I did read a pretty good chunk yesterday I downloaded it on my kindle as well so I've been reading it on there and listening to the audiobook and reading it on here so I'm just doing the whole nine I'm doing all three the the trinity of book stuff I don't love the audiobook that much the the last scene that we had it, they were like arguing Camden and Willow were arguing and it was like so intense, it was so intense and the voice actors were really getting into it and I was like, it's just, it's a little too much for me. They're like actually yelling at each other as they're recording this and I was like, jeez, that's, that's a little bit intense. But it, again, it's not terrible. I don't love the woman. She's very theatrical with it, which is fine. I'm sure some people like that, but I would prefer dialogue to be like more like you're talking to somebody actually. So like, for example... The last line it says, I guess it was time to dig myself out. She's like, you know, talking to us as the reader. And so the the, the 
the audiobook lady, she goes, guess it was time to dig myself out. And I was like, you s hmm? <laughs> like, she, they, she almost sounds like a news reporter, kind of, in a way. Like, she's, I don't know. And I don't like that. I just don't think it's natural. It just doesn't sound very natural to me, so I'm not the biggest fan of it. But, you know, it is what it is. I just can't get over that one audiobook that I listened to. I really can't. That was so good. It was fabulous. But... I'm gonna go shower because I need to finish this pretzels up sometime soon. And I need to get this whole out of my hair. So I just finished up Great and Precious Things and may I just say, holy plot twist. I was not expecting plot twists in this book, but there were. There were like three of them. Crazy. Literally crazy. Man. I did really enjoy this. I think I'm going to be pretty conflicted with a rating for a little bit just because I I don't really know how I felt about it. I did like it. There were some parts that were really frustrating me and I didn't really love. But other than that, I thought it was good. It was a cute story. I thought it was really sad because the dad had Alzheimer's and there was... I feel like all the books that I've read lately, somebody has Alzheimer's in it or dementia or whatever. And the dad wanted a DNR and so basically Camden, the son, came back to help his dad obtain a DNR from his brother, who was his caretaker, Alexander, that did not want to allow his dad to, to have a DNR. It was kind of, it was kind of intense, kind of emotional. It wasn't super like military or anything like that, which I was expecting them to be in the military, but he wasn't. He just got out before he came back to live with his family. So that was fine. Lucky for him, dude just dropped everything and somehow got out of his contract immediately. <laughs> Power to him, I guess, man. But I did, I did really like it. It was romantic and stuff. It wasn't super crazy. I don't think that it had any spice in it. I, I just finished it, but I don't remember. Maybe it had like one scene, but if it did, I don't think that it really went heavy on it at all. It was just a very glossed over. If that, again, I don't actually remember what happened in that scene, but overall the entire book, it was not bad. There wasn't anything like super intense. There wasn't anything super spicy that's going on. I do think that they got together around 200 pages, about halfway through the book they got together. I typically prefer more slow burn stuff, so I was hoping that they would draw it out a lot longer than they did, but it's okay. Nonetheless, I still did enjoy the storyline, even though they already pursued their relationship and stuff. So, I enjoyed it. I really liked it. I'm, I'm gonna have to sit and ponder on a rating. I'm not quite sure what I would want to give it, but... I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was pretty cool. Pretty good. So then, moving on, for my second book, I'm going to read The Last Letter, also by Rebecca Yaros, because, again, military books. I think all of her romance books are military books. I think she was, I don't know if her husband was in the army or um, if it was her dad. I say army. That's military. I don't know who in her family or whatever was in the military, but it was somebody and I think she said it was her husband, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be so wrong. Looking at the back of it now, I don't feel like it's going to be as interesting as this one was. I could be so wrong. This one could be better, but whenever I first like put these books in order, I think that one I assumed is going to be my least favorite and then saved obviously the one that I thought was going to be my favorite for the end. But we'll see. We'll see what I think. I think my biggest worry about this is that I don't like stepping down so if I really really enjoyed this book I don't want to then read this book and it not be as good you know what I mean I feel like everybody's like that it just deters me from wanting to read it because I don't want this to not be as good as the last book that I read but let me mention something because I think it's so not cringy but it's so like corny on I'll start at the first chapter so I'm not spooling anything hopefully but she does like for the cover pages for all these, there's like dog tags on them. And I think it's so goofy. Again, to each her own, if she really enjoys that, that's totally fine. If that's what she likes. But 
I just think it's so funny and just like every time I get to a new chapter I was like man that's so that's so odd because I, I think maybe from my thing is he wasn't like still in the military or anything like that he was out and kind of done and leaving that part of his life behind and then we're 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 getting dog tags I would expect it more if he was like you know out somewhere still in the military but he wasn't Mm, that's okay. I am going to dive a little bit into this tonight. I don't think I want to get too terribly far into it, but I do want to start it a little bit. See what I think. It's going to take me a minute to get into this one. I think this one is a little bit longer than the other one, maybe by like 40 pages or something. Definitely not that bad. And I'm excited. I thought the last book was kind of cute, kind of, kind of fascinating, and I'm excited for this one. Hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully I enjoy it. I do think that this one is going to be another getting out of the army so that they can do something back home or do something wherever they're going once they get out. And I don't love that necessarily. Like, as much as I am not a military action girly, like, Nick loves to watch all of the military action movies and stuff, and that's totally fine. But sometimes I get tired of it, right? But I feel like for this, I want some action. Like, I want some kind of military action with it, you know what I mean? Like, I want them to be doing something exciting and exhilarating and just... Go for it, full force. I, I like, I actually am reading an army romance kind of, so I feel like, a military romance, sorry. So I feel like I kind of want some of that like military vibe in there, not just as like a thing of the past, but it's okay, we'll see. I'll let you know what I think of it. I just got back from church. I'm currently dog sitting right now, so I am not home, but I do have more scenic places to sit and chat with you, which is super exciting. I don't remember the last thing I said. I did start the last letter by Rebecca Yaros and I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this. I think I am liking this a little bit better than the last book that I just read. This one basically is, a woman that's writing her brother's friend as like a pen pal while they're on a deployment or something like that. So they become really close in writing these letters to each other and they kind of develop, I don't want to say a relationship, but they develop feelings for each other definitely. So after her brother passes away on like their mission or whatever, Chaos, the guy that she was writing the letters to, aka Beckett, decides to come back and take care of Ella because her brother asked him to basically. So he utilizes his time off and he decides that he wants to go ahead and get out, come back and take care of her along with her two kids, the little twins. That was probably a terrible explanation, but I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just what you get over here. I normally don't like children in books a lot of the times. I feel like they get really snobby and stuff. I don't really know of many books that I've read that had children in it, but I do remember I read a Colleen Hoover book and the kid in that book just irritated me a lot. Usually just the, the kids that have lines and stuff, I just don't really care for them that much. But I do think that the children in this book do add a lot to the story, given that they are a big premise of the story. They are a big reason as to why he decided to get out and come back to take care of her. So I feel like in that sense, if you're going to make them a big part of it, then it's probably a good thing that they aren't terrible bratty children. <laughs> At least in my opinion, if they were, then I don't think anybody would want to read it. This is very sad. It's it's kind of upsetting. It's you know they deal with a bunch of aggressive illnesses and stuff like this. So I guess trigger warnings. I, I don't really know what trigger warnings are like at this point anymore. I, like I think anybody can get triggered like at anything. So I don't really know, but I guess there are some sensitive topics in here. So just be you know weary of that. But I do really enjoy it. I think it's really sweet so far. The two main characters. I don't even think they've so much as like kissed i don't even think that they've hugged any at all and i'm about like halfway through the book i've been reading some of it on the audiobook so i think i got like another couple chapters through so I'm, I'm probably halfway through about right now but i don't even think they've like nothing has happened so this is like extremely slow burn and i love 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 my slow burn love it literally love it so much but they do have a ton of like romantic tension and stuff like that between the two and it's just really really exciting i'm really enjoying it i didn't think i was gonna like military romance at all i thought that it was just gonna be super cheesy and like ridiculous and stuff and that's kind of what i expected but i feel like these are pretty pretty emotional for the most part i don't think that the first book was as emotional like as this one but nonetheless i am really enjoying it i'm gonna get in the sun a little bit i'm freezing cold in the house all the air was turned down last night the like ac unit wasn't on at all and so it got like 55 in the house and i was freezing to death but that's you know kicking on so if you hear that also there's the sweet little pond over here that's going so you'll probably hear that but that's okay 
outside in nature. I'm enjoying the, the sun while it's not freezing cold outside. So I am gonna read a little bit more of this. Hopefully I can get it finished today. That's really my goal. And I don't have literally anything to do all week other than watch the little doggy and just hang out and read these books. But that's the goal to finish it today, which I mean, I'm super into the story right now. So it, it it's not even gonna be like a chore at all. I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy myself. finished the last letter and I really really liked it. I would say the only thing that I really just don't understand, I or at least I didn't understand about this one is just how unlucky this little family was. I mean, it's like it was almost unrealistic just the amount of crap they were dealing with and just things that would happen and then we'd get over this and then this would happen and then we'd get over that and then something else would happen and it was just like back to back to back things that were going on and it wasn't just like little minuscule things either these were like mass catastrophic events for this family just continuously so I thought that was definitely really odd I do think that I've picked up that Rebecca likes to have these guys that can't save somebody or something and then they literally harp on it the entire book. That's been a recurring theme in this book and the last book. I didn't like it in either one of them, but she did it anyways. I guess that's just her ploy. I guess that's just what she likes to do. Also, they are very plot twisty and not necessarily like you see it coming. Normally romance books are set up like you have them meeting each other, getting to know each other or whatever. They develop a relationship and then there's a third act breakup so something happens and then all of a sudden like they don't like each other anymore and then they decide to get back together and if that's not the end, if them getting back together at that point isn't, you know, game over, then something else will happen, this mass, like, serious event that they have to go through together and it really just solidifies that relationship. And so far in these books, that's kind of what it's been like. That's been the, the storyline. I feel like some people would be like, oh yeah, that, that's like a spoiler. But to me, I don't think, I don't think that that's spoiling at all. I don't think that that's like anything that is uncommon. Any romance book that you read, that's a very common storyline. So uh, to me, if I'm like, oh, they get together in the end or whatever, I just expect it. I, if I'm reading a romance book, I expect them to get together. I do. And if they don't get together, I won't tell you that, obviously, because that's different. That's something that you don't see every day. But nine times out of ten, they do it the other way. And she kind of follows that the same way throughout. I don't want to say there wasn't a big difference between this one and the last one. But there was definitely a lot of similarities in terms of like the writing, obviously. And then the way that she 
developed the characters and then also the storyline layout. I could see a lot of similarities intertwining between those. So the male characters in both of the books were pretty much the same. They acted the same essentially. Just big broody alpha males. They're gonna, they're gonna take care of everything, which is great. Good for them. That's fantastic. But sometimes their need to do that kind of trumped everything else. And so that got kind of a little frustrating for me. Because again, you can't fix everything. I mean, you really can't. And they were like, this one thing happened and I couldn't fix it. And it just is gonna destroy my life. But I mean, you couldn't have done anything, like literally and then they harp on it the entire time. I guess that's my two cents with that. I think there's something else that I was going to mention in this book. Oh, and then also their drama. I don't know if it was just me that I thought it was super, I didn't really understand, but essentially Beckett decides that he's not going to tell Ella. Is that her name? Let me just find one of the chapters. Yes. Beckett decides that he doesn't want to tell Ella that he was the one that was writing her the letters back whenever they were deployed. So they wrote letters back and forth like pen pals and then something happened and caused him to stop writing. So then he comes back to take care of her and doesn't let her know that he is the one that was writing the letters to begin with. He doesn't want to tell her that because he thinks that she's going to get mad and make him leave by finding out this information. When in actuality, like, I don't see anybody actually getting mad about that at all. It, to me, it was just kind of all in his head and he was just very much overreacting. I feel like he could have told her from the get-go and it really wouldn't have been that big of a deal. But it's a book. I'm aware of that. I'm gonna say this. I know that I complain about the books, but I feel like it's more helpful to know what the annoying things are or what the irritations are in the books versus the good stuff because the good stuff is just the good stuff you know you don't really want to know what happens with the good that you're going to be like kicking in your feet and whatever you want to know like is this book going to be something that i don't want to read because of this does that make any sense i don't know because like if i'm going to like the book i'm going to read it and i'm going to like it but if i tell you all the things that i don't like about it normally i just don't have a very strong opinion on the stuff that i like usually like it's good I liked it, but it wasn't like, it wasn't that I liked it enough to have specifics to tell you about liking it. I really just more have specifics on the negatives that I, that came out of it for me. I don't know, maybe that's weird. I just have such a bad memory, so like the good stuff is just kind of like, okay, cool, 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 but then like the bad stuff, it just keeps happening over and over again, and I'm like, ooh, that kind of annoyed me, I'm kind of annoyed, and then it just doesn't get resolved. I'll have to think on that. I have to figure out because I can't I don't want to sit here and tell you the good without like I, I feel like I can't tell you the good without spoiling it plus you want to just read the good I don't know I'm just rambling on a little bit but I did enjoy it I actually found somebody talking about this on Facebook today and they were talking about it being really sad and I didn't really think anything of it and then I got to the end and I was like oh <laughs> okay like I wasn't expecting that you know you just kind of think that end of romance book like all is gonna be well and everything is gonna be resolved and things are good but I, I guess that doesn't always happen and you know Miss Rebecca over here decided that she didn't want that to happen for this book so it was it was sad it was a little sad I wasn't like crying or anything but it was a little a little tearjerker I would say I do think that I like this one a little bit more than the other one if I didn't say that before not to say that the other one wasn't good at all though but I think this one has a little bit of a leg up from the other one. So far, it is not quite getting me in a bigger mood for Nicholas to come home. Nick's coming home and he's still gonna be in the army. These people are getting out of the army or military. I don't know if they're technically in the army. <laughs> I won't say that. I would assume, but you know. So they're getting out to go be with these people. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't quite line up with my situation, you know? Obviously some of them are coming home from deployments and stuff like that, but they're getting out. They're not just like coming home and they're still in it and still in the cycle. <laughs> so it's a little different. Definitely not what I was expecting with these. I don't know what I thought they were gonna be, but they weren't. I wasn't expecting them to be getting out of, out of the military. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. But I say that literally with every book. Like I wasn't expecting it to be like this. 
but it was. But I would recommend this one. I think I would I would say if you're if you're in the mood for a military romance or something like that, I would give this one a try. It was very it was a little sad. I would say if you're more emotional, then uh, this might make you cry, possibly. And again, check your trigger warnings. Like if you're sensitive to sicknesses, illnesses, stuff like that. Just throwing it out there. I'm going to finish watching Criminal Minds and then I'm probably gonna go sleep and then I'll pick up the other book in the morning. I've been sitting here doing some thumbnail stuff. So I've pretty much solely been listening to the audiobook. But I am on chapter, hello, I am on chapter 9 right now of Things We Leave Unfinished. So far, I don't know how I feel about it. I think the going back and forth, it definitely confused me in the beginning, right off the bat when it first started happening. I have no idea what the problem was, but I didn't realize that it was going back in time. And then... The accents were changing and I was like what is going on so that took me a second still just from listening to it I'm having <laughs> a tough time differentiating the past and the present obviously it's super easy because you know the accents and stuff but it takes me a, a while to actually comprehend that their accents have swapped up that's been kind of weird I don't know how I'm feeling about the particular storyline right now it's basically so far, it's this woman, her grandma died and she's like a famous author and her mom decides that she wants to sell this book that the grandma vowed never to have anybody read outside of the family. So the mom pretends to be the daughter that inherited everything from her grandma along with all of the rights to her books and stuff like that. The mom pretends to be the daughter to try to sell this book because the mom didn't get any inheritance money. So she wants some money and decides that she wants to try to sell this book out from underneath them so that way she can profit off of it. She decides to go ahead and go through with it and sell it for her mom. And she asks for a specific author to finish writing the story in her grandma's place. And he decides that he's gonna do it and now they're having issues. It's, it's, it's interesting, I don't think it's not what I was expecting, <laughs> of course. Literally, like, take a shot every time you hear me say that on this channel. Jeez. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's different. It's not... So far, I'm not loving it. I, so far, I am liking The Last Letter better. I did think that I was going to like this one the best, but as of right now, I'm not loving it. I think that the past tense, it's, it's a cute story, and maybe it's just because I was not focusing hard enough on listening to it but it's not super great in my opinion. I don't know, I'm just not, I'm not really focusing on it. This fly is driving me nuts, I can't kill it. I haven't been super focused on it or anything like that, so it's not, so far it's not my favorite. Maybe by the time we get halfway through, I'll end up liking it more or at the point that I'm at, I will end up liking it more than some of the other books. As of right now, I would probably put this last out of the three, but I do think that it's, it's different. It's set in the past tense a lot. So what is it like 1600s? 19. 1600s. <laughs> no, not the 1600s, the 1940s. So that's basically when her grandma was alive and going through this romance and now they are recreating it essentially telling a new story for her. What I don't know right now is if the past tense that we're getting and that we're hearing is the physical past or if it's the past that he's writing. Because we, I, to my knowledge, we've seen up to the end of the manuscript, which is basically the past tense and everything that she wrote about in the past. So I don't know if the, the, what is it called? Backshadowing? What is it called whenever you go back in a movie? I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know if them going back and revisiting the past, I don't know if that is what actually happened and her actual story of the romance or since he's finishing up the book, I don't know if that is him filling in how the story is going. You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? I don't know. I really can't figure it out. I guess we read up to the manuscript, so we finished what she had physically written in the book, 
and then I guess the rest of the information is coming from the letters but like I said these backstories these aren't letters I don't know I really don't know maybe I'm just thoroughly confused so like so when we are in the present tense they have these letters that are written I would assume by the grandma but then whenever we go into the past and they have the chapter it they have the chapter set in 1940 it's not there's no letters in it and it's just going through I would assume that if it says 1940 that that would mean that it actually happened so maybe that's dumb of me I don't know but that's kind of my thoughts so far right now the overlapping of the past and presents kind of mm, there might be two romances in this which might be kind of interesting so I'm curious to see how that would play out that would be kind of unique I feel like it says it's a stunning emotional romance so maybe it will be emotional because apparently the ending isn't a happy one according to the back of the book so maybe one person will have a not happy ending and the next will but what I do like about this and what is nice is that this one is based on a World War II pilot and so he is still physically in the army he I mean, I need to stop that. He is still physically in the military, so it's basically their romance, at least as of what I'm at right now, their romance while he's in in military. So that was kind of what I was lacking on the last two books that I was more expecting. I was expecting them to, at least one of them, I thought one of them, I didn't know that they were getting out. But I did think that they were going, maybe I didn't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I thought, maybe I read it and knew that they weren't and then just, in my brain decided that they were anyways <laughs> but this one at least the the guy is still in the military so I, that's kind of more pertaining to my situation I, I would say I am very excited about that I'm excited to see that relationship play out and then also I would assume that the granddaughter and the new writer of her grandma's book that they're going to get together and you know the whole nine so we'll see I don't know I'm also curious to see then, say this book has two romance plots in it, the, the present and the past tense romance, I'm curious to see if A, it's going to be spicy, and B, if they both are spicy, what the difference is going to be between the two characters and their romance. Because one is taking place in 1940, so I would just assume that things are tamer in 1940. I, I, again, I'm assuming, I don't really know, but I, my assumption would be that it's more tame and less physical and stuff versus them in the modern day that might be more where any spice could come in but I'm just speculating this is me just thinking out loud here I really don't know so far it's not bad it's just definitely different I will say that I think that I'm going to end up liking it but as of right now it's a little bit more difficult to get used to because the other two books were very very similar I already said that but they were the structure was pretty similar especially with the way that the male characters were but this one totally different as of right now so we'll see what happens with that I'm excited to honestly I don't even know if I want to physically read this right now I'd rather just wait until I get about halfway through it to kind of start the actual book I mean so far, this is what I've listened to on audiobook, and I've been just getting a bunch of other stuff knocked out while I do this. So that's good. We're good to at least have 100 pages in so far. That's the goal. I don't know. We'll see what happens.
just finished The Things We Leave Unfinished and I would say this is probably my least favorite of the three books that I read. I don't know what it was about this one. I don't know if it's just that I didn't find it that interesting. I didn't really care about the people. I didn't care about the plot. I just didn't really like it that much. I just thought it was kind of boring. It was definitely more unique than the other books, I would say. I thought it was fascinating that there was like two stories kind of intertwined in between both of them. It was like this romance story about these two people in the past and then now between people that are trying to write a book about that romance, that past romance. I wanted to like it, I really did. And like, the book is good, don't get me wrong. It is a it is a good book, I would say. I just didn't resonate with it that much. I don't know. I, I feel bad for not liking it because I feel like it's a good book and I feel like a lot of people do enjoy it, but it just wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't really care for the, the main characters at all. I didn't really care about them recreating this book. There was still plot twists in this one and the plot twists did get me pretty good. I just, I didn't really like it that much. It was okay. I would definitely would not reread it. I probably wouldn't recommend it to anybody either. I thought it was nice as like a historical romance type of thing. I think I would have preferred it if it was just specifically in the past tense. It was just their past relationship. I just, the overlapping between the two, I just didn't really care for it. The mom really annoyed me though, I will say that. The mom was terrible and she was kind of mean and I, mm. wow. But I think the ending was good. I think like the last 10% of it I, I enjoyed. Other than that, I wasn't a fan. So I read three Rebecca Yaro's military romances this week. I read Great and Precious Things. This one, I say it definitely wasn't my favorite of the two. I thought it was cute and just, it was simple. It wasn't anything that intense necessarily. I didn't quite care fully about like the small town romance. I read Indigo Ridge and that small town romance, that perfect. This one, I just, it was all right. Wasn't my favorite, didn't really care for it too much, but I still did like it for what it was. Then I read The Last Letter and this one was definitely my favorite between the two. This one I think had the most substance and it definitely was very heart-wrenching at some points. There definitely was a lot more serious topics in this and I thought that that was more interesting to read throughout the whole thing. I think whether I realized it or not, I was kind of tense the entire time just trying to figure out what was gonna happen and where they were gonna take this book because they had this very, very clear path caved out and it's more just the whole time you're like, okay, well, are they going to go with the negative of this path or are they gonna go with the positive of this path? And being a romance book, normally you would think that they're gonna go the positive. The negatives in this book, like the negative things that happened to the characters in this book were almost unrealistic just because there was so much negativity that was happening, just back to back to back to back. like. This thing would happen and then this thing would happen and then as we're getting over this thing this thing would happen i feel like stuff like that doesn't happen in the real world that often you have to be extremely unlucky or something to go through everything that the main characters went through in this book but then the like third act breakup type thing i didn't really find it that big of a deal the people in these books they have very big issues with lying because they all have past relationship problems and like serious issues in their marriages before they meet the love interest in them and you could definitely tell but the things that were lied about it, it just like they were like lying to spare feelings and stuff and it just i don't know it wasn't a big deal in the slightest but they just took it and ran with it and I didn't really agree with that, but I mean, it is what it is. But that's just how they reacted to it, I guess. I just thought it was kind of odd that the lies were so minuscule. And to me, looking at it, I w probably wouldn't have thought it a big deal. Like, okay, I understand where you came from. Let's not do this again. You get another chance and then after that, you're, you're done. But instead, they were just, if I hear a single lie come out of your mouth, you are absolutely done for. You're not you're not gonna ever speak to me again. I mean, what if he tells you that you look nice in a dress and you really don't because he just wants to be really nice and you're like, okay, you're done, bye, get out of here, we're divorcing, like, a, I don't know, I don't know. But this one was probably my favorite out of the three. Then I just talked about this one a little bit. I didn't really like this one, I'm sorry, it just wasn't for me. Again, they had just lots of unluck. It's like every negative thing that could possibly happen 
happens and it's just it's just weird it, I don't know I mean I get that these are like military books and stuff and when you're at war and that's your setting there is a lot of potential for things to go wrong and you know people to die and stuff but it just it like every it, <laughs> it's just so much it's almost too much also in all of these books she sets up all of these terrible things to happen and it's just constant it's constantly happening to the characters and then they're all like and I think in every single book, they were just, I don't understand how a god can be so cruel to do this. And it, it just was so odd. But all of these negative things were happening to these characters in the book. And it was just like a constant negativity. And then in every single one of them, they were all talking about like not understanding why a, a god is this cruel and stuff. And it just, it was like a very consistent line throughout all of the books. At least from what I can remember, I don't know about this one. But I do know for a fact that at least these two, the line was very, and, and they said it like multiple times, just, I don't understand why God's so cruel. Why is he being so cruel to, like, I it just, I don't know, find a different line or something. You could just tell that these were all written by the same author, obviously. It's almost like you run out of ideas in a way, and you just have to keep reusing things from book to book. And maybe it wouldn't be that big of a deal if I didn't read them back to back. Obviously, I'm I'm aware of that if I read this book like seven months ago and then I read this book yesterday it wouldn't be as noticeable to me and I probably would have forgotten it but reading them back to back it was just kind of like reusing the same line over and over again I just don't really like whenever books keep saying the same thing so essentially these two were pretty similar the male main characters were practically identical obviously the storylines were different and stuff like that but the characters themselves they definitely had the exact same attitude they growled every time somebody came close to the woman that they were into just you know very alpha male type vibes i guess i don't know it was just like okay <laughs> it's just kind of weird these two got into where the main characters were very very against lying they had they had been married previously and then the marriage ended because the guy was a terrible dude and then the woman was like never again if a man ever lies to me i will never talk to him ever again so those were very heavy on that and also very heavy on the god is so terrible because all of these things keep happening it is so very similar they all seemed very similar to me in a sense whether or not it was the storyline the characters the wording and stuff the descriptions of things whatever the case was they definitely gave off extreme hints of the other book and i get you know people have writing styles and stuff like that but to me it just i don't know i'd rather some difference all of them did follow along on the stereotypical romance book path they fall in love about halfway through the book they're into each other very physical and then something happens very slightly and then they just stop talking the guy is hating his life he never wants to live without this woman he's like this is all my fault i cannot believe this this is ridiculous and then something happens and then they get back together and then these books took it a step farther and then there was an extra little plot twist so yeah. I wouldn't say that these are my favorite by any means. I definitely would probably lean towards other books in a way. There was nothing wrong with them, but they just weren't necessarily my cup of tea. I thought that my least favorite was going to be Great and Precious Things, and then my second favorite was going to be The Last Letter, and then my absolute favorite was going to be The Things That We Left Unfinished. But I ended up liking this one last, then this one second to last, and then I liked this one the best. I thought that this was not a lot more substance than I already said that, but I think that out of all of them, this was probably the best one, and I would probably recommend it to other people. I did enjoy it. I guess that's all I got for you guys. <laughs> so let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know if you have read all of these, which ones are your favorite and your least favorite. Again, I'm not trying to be a hater and stuff. These just weren't necessarily the books for me, I would say other than maybe this one. I did really like this one. But thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day and I hopefully we'll get to see you in the next one. See ya!